To do that, we'll have to go back in time to the late 60s. So what was happening in the 60s? Well, for example, the first man landed on the moon. That was also the time when Woodstock took place. And also the time when the first 60 second picture from Polaroid was created. Concurrently to these events, which you probably didn't witness in first person, that was also the time when people started to realize that they were not able to build the software they needed. This happened for several reasons and resulted in what we call the software crisis. So let's look at some of the most important reasons behind this crisis. The first cause was the rising demand for software. Now you're used to see software everywhere, in your phone, in your car, even in your washing machine. Before the 60s, however, the size and complexity of software was very limited and hardware components were really dominating the scene. Then things started to change and software started to become increasingly prevalent. So we moved from a situation where everything was mostly hardware to a situation in which software became more and more important. To give you an example, I'm gonna show you the growth in the software demand at NASA along those years. And in particular, from the 1950s to more or less 2000. And this is just a qualitative plot, but that's more or less the way things went. So the demand for software in NASA grew exponentially. And the same happened in a lot of other companies. For example, just to cite one for Boeing. So the amount of software on airplanes became larger and larger. The second cause for the software crisis was the increasing amount of development effort needed due to the increase of product complexity. Unfortunately, software complexity does not increase linearly with size. It is not the same thing to write software for a class exercise or small project or a term project than it is to build software for a word processor, an operating system, a distributed system, systems or even more complex and larger system. And what I'm giving here is just an indicative size for this software. So the class exercise might be a hundred lines of code, the small project might be a thousand lines of code in the order of a thousand lines of code and so on and so forth. For the former, the heroic effort of an individual developer can get the job done. So that's what we call a programming effort. If you're a good programmer, you can go sit down and do it right. For the latter, this is not possible. This is what we call a software engineering effort. In fact, no matter how much programming languages, development environments, and software tools improved, developers could not keep up with the increase in software size and complexity, which leads us to the third problem that I want to mention, and the third reason for the software crisis. And this cause is the slow developer's productivity growth. So let me show this again with a qualitative diagram. And this is taken from a, the IEEE software magazine. And what I'm showing here is the growth in software size and complexity over time and how the developer's productivity really couldn't keep up with this additional software complexity, which resulted in this gap between what was needed and what was actually available. 